All right, once again, welcome everybody to the Gano Tour. My name is Mike Marimoto, Director of Field Relations. And today we're going to talk about the company and the products. Now we're going to use a little bit of science, a little bit of common sense to build a little belief in what we're doing. Because like I always say, if you can't believe in what you're doing, it's really, really hard to get other people to believe in what you're doing. So let's go through it. And hopefully by the end of this, you can understand just a little bit more about how our company works and why we do it the way we do. Now, the first question I always ask people is, what is the first thing you need to do to become healthier? After living and breathing, you have to do this one thing first before anything. A lot of people think it's nutrition. A lot of think, people think it's hydration or exercise. But it comes before those things. The first thing you have to do is simply make a decision. Now, those people that make a healthy decision in their lives, what percentage of them actually stick with it past six months? Now, before you answer that question, let me ask you a few more. How many people do you know that started a diet, but they never finished it? How many people do you know that have a gym membership, but they stopped going? How many people do you know that bought one of those exercise or ab machines off an infomercial, but all they do is hide it under the bed or hang their clothes on it, right? The harder questions that you might ask people are how many people do you know that started a diet, accomplished their goal, and maintained it? How many people do you know that exercise every single day? How many people do you know that actually have a six-pack? <laughs> and no, we're not talking about the six-pack in your fridge, right? 97% of everybody quits. 97% never make it. Well, let me ask you this question. How many people do you know that drink coffee? Yeah. How often do they forget to drink it? Yeah, never. People never forget to drink their coffee. Why is that? Well, first of all, it's an addiction, right? People never forget. They never forget. Now, how many types of addictions are there out there? Well, there are two. What do you mean there's only two addictions? Well, there's legal ones and illegal ones, right? Now, there's a guy in every corner selling drugs to people, but let's talk about legal addictions for a second. For now, let's just call them Starbucks. And aren't they in every single corner, too? Yeah. Well, who's winning? Well, Starbucks is. How do we know that? Well, guess what people drink more of when they try to give up smoking, drinking, or doing drugs? Yeah, they drink more coffee. In fact, it's the one addiction people use to get rid of other addictions in life. It's the number one comfort food, second largest traded commodity, and second most consumed beverage other than water. Now, what do we do with coffee? Well, we make it good for you. But do we call it healthy? Healthy coffee. But we tried that for a while, and we ran into a few problems. Because when we called it healthy people would assume, well, that it probably didn't taste very good. So then we had to explain to them that it tasted good. Then they would assume that, well, healthy coffee wouldn't have caffeine, so it probably doesn't have caffeine. Then we had to explain to them that it did. And then we explained to them, hey, you know, then they assumed that it's probably not even real coffee. Then we had to explain that we use the finest coffees. So instead of calling it healthy, we switched it to enriched. Why enriched? Well, enriched simply means we're adding something to real coffee. Now, some people still might ask, does it have caffeine in it? My answer to them is, I sure hope so. Isn't that why people drink coffee? In fact, if you knew how they decaffeinated coffee, you probably wouldn't drink it anyways. It's a harsh chemical process, far worse for you than the caffeine ever could have been. In fact, it takes five cancer-causing chemicals just to decaffeinate most brands of coffee. Now, what do we enrich it with? Before we answer that, has anybody here tried any enriched products? Yeah, vitamin water, Gatorade, Coke, orange juice with calcium, milk with vitamin D. Pretty much everybody's tried at least one of those. Now, vitamin water, let's talk about that. What did we call vitamin water before we added the vitamins? Well, when I was a kid, we called flavored water Kool-Aid. Now you add vitamins to Kool-Aid and boom, billion dollar industry, right? So what do we enrich ours with? makes it so special? Well, we enrich it with a very powerful herb called Ganoderma lucidum. It's also a very powerful botanical. But if you don't know what Ganoderma lucidum is, it's a giant.
giant red mushroom. And yes, if you drank our coffee, you drank mushroom coffee. Now don't worry, it's not the same mushrooms you had in high school, so you'll be fine. No, I'm just kidding. There's over 200 different varieties of gonadermal lucidum, and they're all very good for the body. There are some better than others and some better than those. But when you get to the very best ones, they start targeting your body in different ways. So there's one best for the immune system, one best for the cardiovascular system, one best for the internal organs, and so on and so forth. Now, there's a lot of companies out there that claim that they're better than we are, and they claim to have the best gonadermal lucidum. Now, my question to them is, if you have the best one, what's it the best for? And they look at me confused and they say, well, what are you talking about? Well, the best one's target, what does yours target? And they never really know the answer to that question. And so they turn it around on me and they say, well, what is yours target? And I says, my target's everything <laughs> because we use six different kinds. We don't use just one, we use the six most beneficial for the human body. The second thing we do different is we have a proprietary extraction method that, you know, concentrates it, makes it absorb quickly and easily in the body so it works good. It also makes it odorless and tasteless so it tastes good. So there's a lot of science that's gone behind all of our products. But before we get to the science and how our products do and work and everything of that nature, let's talk about why. So let's start here. Why are Americans so unhealthy? That's a good question. Why are they so unhealthy? We have the best medical technology in the world, but yet we rank 26 in mortality rate out of the top 28 countries. Wow, that's weird. Why, though? Well, a lot of people say, well, you know what, it's knowledge. We don't understand how to be healthy. But is it being healthy more common sense than anything? Drinking more water, eating more vegetables, walking around the block a couple times every night, but yet most people don't do that. Why don't they? Well, that most common excuse for that is, well, I don't have enough time. No time. I say, wow, you must be really busy. Because I work here six days a week, 12 hours a day. I have two small children, and yet I exercise every day. How do I do it? Well, I still have no time. I just spell it a little different. I know my time. So it's not time, you know, or knowledge that, uh, you know, prevents it. In fact, everybody here you know, if you don't have enough time, there is an actual magical button in your house. If you press it, yeah, it'll shut your TV off, so that maybe you can make a little more time. So it's not time and knowledge. In fact, it comes down to one basic thing. It's the same reason I drive my car, and there's a volume control on the steering wheel, because it hurts my arm to twist that little knob down there. It's the same reason I go to McDonald's, and if I don't get my food in five minutes or less, I get upset. You want to get me really upset? Make me get out of my car to get the food, right? So what have we become as a society? Yeah, maybe just a little bit lazy. Now, we have a gentleman, Mr. Liao Sun Tseng, who is the owner and founder of our company, and he's kind of revolutionized uh, this gonoderma industry. Okay? In 1980, he started studying gonoderma lucidum. He found out there was 200 different varieties found the top six of the human body, figure out how to tissue culture and clone those mushrooms, and how to extract the nutrients, making a proprietary formula, making every single one of our cups of coffee exactly the same as the last. That took him 15 years. 15 years of research and development before founding Gano Excel. 15 years of research and development before starting the largest organic plantation in the world. But how large is the largest? Well, we can produce 100,000 mushrooms in every greenhouse. We have 652 gonoderma greenhouses, 65 million mushrooms every three months, supporting retail sales of up to $3 billion. Now, are we sure on that? No, because we've never hit $3 billion in a year, but I guess if we uh, put it all together, it all adds up. Now, in 1997, we launched it in coffee. Why coffee? Well, everybody drinks it. Why else? Well, if I offered you some pills and said, here, take these pills, what would you ask me? Why? What are they? What are they going to do? How are they going to help me? Well, here, drink some of the special juice. Why? What is it? What's in it? What's it going to do to help me? Would you like a cup of coffee? Sure. You see the difference in our marketing versus everybody else? People want to drink our product because they want to drink coffee. 